to finish her off. This is what she had in mind before. Yeah, 450. One, two, three. The winner of this match and still the TBS champion. What up, y'all? This your boy Ace here, and welcome to Afternoon's Delight. And uh, I couldn't wait to talk about this one. So, this is going to be the first of two parts. Now, I talked a little bit more about Sky Blue on Rampage, what was going on with her there. We're going to talk about it again in the next video because we're going to talk about what happened after the match when Sky Blue came out. But right here, we're going to talk about the match itself. So, this was on Battle of the Bell, so after Collision in Memphis. And um, there was a little bit of a slight difference with the crowds. The crowds were a little bit more involved in uh, on Rampage to me. Whereas this crowd, you know, they got more into the match towards the end. Uh, and that was and this match was amazing. Like, this match was pretty fucking awesome. Like, it reminded me of the match that Chris Statlander had with Julia Hart earlier in the month. And, and, and this is why I'm really respecting Chris Statlander so much as a wrestler and a champion. A TBS champion. Because she's actually putting on really good matches all year. Like, when I do my women's... Uh, Matt, like uh, my top 10 women's matches of the year of 2023. I'll probably do this video sometime in January or February. At least two of her matches will be in there because I really feel like she's put in some really good work this year. And I feel like this is one of them. I feel like this is one that I might have to consider because Willow Nightingale did a great job. It was a really good, fun match. to show both girls size too because both of them are, you know, uh, big in size and are very strong in strength. Uh, it, 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 that's how the match correlated. Let's go over how the match actually went. Let's see who won this TBS title. So an exchange of arm bars to start, followed by a series of chain wrestling moves. Statlander nearly botched a leapfrog, but took um, Nightingale down with a shoulder block for a one count. Statlander hit a springboard elbow, which prompted Nightingale to roll out uh, to the outside. Statlander dove onto her, but uh, Nightingale recovered and hit a cannonball splash onto Statlander. Uh, who was propped against the, the steps. So, and and uh, like I said, it, it was like a really awkward landing spot for Chris Statlander, you know, with her knee issues from the past. You know, you don't really want to see her take like awkward falls like that. Uh, because I'm telling you what, this woman's division needs Chris Statlander, man, to stay healthy, bro, because she's a really good performer, and we can't afford to have her being out again like that, man. But, um, so hopefully she just continues to stay healthy for us, man. Nightingale stayed on offense throughout the commercial. Um, and, and the feed that I watch is the Fight TV feed. If I don't watch it, I usually don't watch Rampage and Collision on um, on TV because I watch them on Fight, so I can watch them a little closer. I don't got to watch the whole show like I do with Dynamite. Sometimes I just go straight to the women's match like I did here. But I actually watched the whole Battle of the Bells, though, uh, like I did with Rampage the whole night. But they show... On Fight TV, they actually show the match, like, full screen, not picture in picture. So, you get a, you get a chance to see more of the match throughout it. So, um, and Nightingale was showing a little bit more of her aggressive side, the heel work that she's doing right now. Coming out of the break, the two exchanged blows in the center of the ring. Statlander hit a running knee, followed by a blue thunderball for a near fall. Nightingale hit the pounce on Statlander, who recovered and hit a spinning DDT for another near fall. Nightingale hit a uh, Death Valley driver from the second rope for a near fall, followed by her choking Statlander and smiling. The announcers once again addressed that this is the more aggressive side. Nightingale, this is a really cool segment right here. So, uh, one thing that I like is that the fans, they do this like, ooh, 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 like, like um, what's his name from uh, House of Black? Uh, Brody King, man. So, they do like, you know, the little chant or whatever. And so Nightingale climbed the ropes, but was caught by Statlander after that, who power bombed her and hit a 450 splash for the win. That's one of the best finishers today. The way she pulls that off, because Chris Statlander is a bigger girl, bro. Like, she's she's got a lot of size on her. Like, for her to pull off a flip like that, a 450 splash at that, bro, that, that shows how good of an athlete Chris Statlander is, bro. Um, she is so impressive, man. So that was all she wrote for Willow Nightingale, who lost her uh, top uh, opportunity at the TBS title, and they gave him like ten minutes in this match. So Chris Statlander hangs on, and she's been successful 
these last four months plus defending that title. So, uh, good good work from Chris Tatlander. We're going to talk about when Sky Blue uh, came out at the end in the next video. But uh, yeah, this is a really good. This was a really good match, man. I had a lot of fun watching it. It got really fun towards the end. Um, but the girls, you know, they were feeling it all night. Like, they were getting themselves up, you know. And the chemistry was good, man. I, I actually like the chemistry in this match between Willow and Chris. I won't mind them running this back in the future uh, for sure. Um, now, the one thing, and I'll talk about a little bit more about this in the next video. I'm not sure, like, with Sky Blue, I'm liking the, the little decision to go to, to the dark side. I'm not liking it so much with Willow Nightingale. I don't think Willow Nightingale should turn heel. I, I, I really don't. It, it's sort of like Bianca Belair in WWE. I don't think now's the time. Like, look at even look at, like, Trinity and Impact Wrestling. Like, I just don't think certain girls at the moment should turn heel. The only one that I was like this with that I kind of want to see turn heel now is Roxanne Perez. Like, for the longest, she's been a babyface. But I think ever since she did that program with Blair Davenport, I want her to turn heel now. Willow Nightingale, she's too connected with the crowd. I don't think they should lose that. Britt Baker's going to be... I don't know when Jamie Hayter's going to come back. So, you you don't really have... Outside of her car, she did right now. You don't have too many top babyface. Because you're, now you're about to lose Sky Blue to the heel side. So, you don't really have too many... I don't... And I don't think Tony Storm should turn her face either. I think she should remain the character that she is. She should just be some, somewhat of a tweener where she still has the heelish attitude but the crowd roots for her. I think it should be like basically MJF. Basically, even though he's really not a I won't call him a tweener but something like that. So, we'll talk more about it in the next video. Give me your thoughts on this. Give this video a like, share, subscribe. Thank y'all for watching this one after news delight.